Hey everybody, thanks for checking out Ozark Overland Adventures. I'm Matt and today I want to do a full walk around of the one thing that probably gets asked about more than anything else that we have and that's our two-story camper. This thing has been incredible and I want to give you all the details of it. This started out as a VRV Eco Flyer. Now, unfortunately, VRV went out of business at the beginning of 2019. So that's a major bummer. I can't point you guys to, to them anymore to, to go purchase. Uh, but uh, there are similar ones out there on the market. And what makes these little teardrops unique is that they're all aluminum. The frame, the structure, the body panels, everything in them, except for the little wood cabinets on the inside, everything's aluminum which makes it very strong and incredibly lightweight. Um, without the tent and everything added to it, this thing started at just 900 pounds, which is pretty incredible and super easy to pull behind the Jeep, which was a big reason why we got this. So let's just kind of start here at the front and we'll work our way back and up and, and all around. Um, but one of the things that makes this thing so incredible off-road is the lock and roll hitch. This thing has been fantastic. Without this hitch, we could not have gone and taken this to the places that we have. Uh, with a standard you know, two inch ball receiver hitch. The lock and roll makes a world of difference. There's other brands, lock and roll is just what we have. Max Kelper's is another one. Uh, there's a couple other ones on the market. Those are the two big ones. But if you've got a camper, get an articulating hitch for sure. Um, basic battery box where the battery is stored. Of course, we've got a seven way wiring harness to charge the battery while we're pulling it. Right behind the battery, I've got just a cheap 12 volt water pump. Um, that's hardwired to the battery. Take that off. The hose for it fits inside here very nicely. And then this hose connects up here to the water tank. And so I've got another hose that connects there on the water pump and boom, pressurized water for cleaning dishes, whatever, at camp, taking a shower. Um, that has worked incredibly well. Little DIY project on the camper. And that's what this little switch is for down here. Up top, we've got our six gallon water tank. This is one of my DIY projects out of six inch PVC. Um, started out as a pressurized water tank, but that was honestly just a pain in the butt. Trying to get everything sealed and airtight, um, getting out the air compressor to pressurize it and make sure I don't over pressurize it and explode like it actually did one time. Um, so ditched that idea after a couple uses and then went with the um, 12 volt water pump, which has made a big difference and is a whole lot easier to deal with. Um, we've got a 10 by 10 awning, which is also DIY. And then we've got the spare tire mounted up to the roof rack. Coming around to this side, we've got the propane mount. Uh, for our five gallon propane tank. My high lift jack lives up here. I don't use this like ever. As you can see, it's got uh, quite a bit of rust on it here. I'm hoping the internals of this are, are okay. Probably need to take it off and test it and lube it and all that good stuff, but you know. So I had one and that's a good place to put it. And I have one if I need it, hopefully. Um, over here, we've got the outlet for shore power, it goes there. Uh, if we're ever camping somewhere that has power or we have our generator with us. Up top, we do have an air conditioner and heater. Um, we've honestly, I think, used the air conditioner once and we did use the heater recently on our trip to Beaver's Bend State Park. Um, and that was, that was nice. It doesn't get things real hot, but it does warm things up just enough. And then the 23-0 walkabout 62 rooftop tent, which makes this a two-story friggin' awesome camper. The axles on the camper are a Dexter torsion axle. Um, they've been okay. Um, they do bounce around a little bit more than I would like. Um, but unfortunately, I don't have many options. With this having an aluminum frame, um, 
I can't move to an independent uh, axleless suspension with this because at least that's what I've been told. Um, but the Dexter axle has, has done pretty well. We did bend an axle in Colorado, but Dexter did warranty that and sent me a new axle, which is on here. And since I had the opportunity, did go with some bigger tires. These are 31 1050 R15s. Um, and I just like the look of it with slightly bigger tires. Taking a look on this side, uh, we've got exterior lighting, which is handy. Side entry door. Now this platform um, is one that I built. This was, did not have this platform. It was just really just a bed on wheels. Um, it had, we had the mattress for it. It laid down just on the floor of the camper. It had storage in there and a couple cabinets, but that was all it was. We got tired of every time we wanted to, um, you know, just stop somewhere and sleep real quickly. Like sometimes on our trips to Colorado or whatnot. Um, got tired of having to pull everything out in order to make up the bed and sleep in it. That was just a, a pain. So I built this platform. It's about seven inches off the ground. As you can see, it has got just enough room to keep a lot of our things, our camp chef stove, this tote, which has um, just a lot of general camping gear, lights, my hammock, that sort of stuff. There's another tote that fits in behind it. Um, more storage because it goes deeper there but this allows us to keep things out of the way and if we need to just hop in here real quick there's only two or three things we need to take out in order to make up the bed as opposed to pulling everything out to make up the bed inside here we do have uh, usb ports 12 volt outlet um, standard 110 outlets if we're plugged in the shore power we can plug stuff into that we got two cabinets that keep miscellaneous storage things. We've got a tote in here with a lot of different gear stuff, extra blankets and whatnot. Uh, I do have a Midland MXT 115 radio mounted in here because we had an extra one and you know sometimes it's nice to have comms at base camp. Um, storage shelf up here for luggage and whatnot and uh, anyway it works pretty well. All right moving around to the back here's where things try to get a little more creative with how I did the storage. Um, I made this platform right here foldable so now I can just pull the mattress back and boom I've got the bed but I can fold this up move the mattress over here we've got nice comfy seating it's got a fold up table that we can you know if it's raining we can eat in here we've used this to watch movies uh, you know whatever if we need a spot to sit in out of the rain it's great uh, but this allows me to access things like tables uh, we put our water tank here we've got one of those uh, seven gallon cube water jugs water goes back here uh, our domestic toilet sits right back here we've got extra storage under here with our leveling blocks pop-up fire pit awning poles uh, just all kinds of general stuff extra tables under there um, but this thing's been great well, that's uh, pretty much it as far as the walk around of the camper itself. Let me get the tent set up and the awning set up and show you what a big difference that makes. All right, this is it. This is the full setup here. Um, I did learn something. One, I didn't pull my camper out enough to fully open the back end to the house and I wasn't going to move the camper again. Um, and two, when you do it on the driveway, you can't stake the ends down into the ground to prevent the wind from blowing it that way. So um, I had to get creative and have it tied to the wheel and to the corner of my Jeep to keep the wind from, from blowing because it's a windy day today. Um, but this is it. This gives us so much more space than just the inside of the camper. It gives us an option to have a lot of dry space for when it's raining. Um, let me take you in there and I'll show you. Now normally we go in that way, but because the house is in the way, I can't. Um, but here we are inside. As you can see, there is just a ton of floor space under this annex. Now when we have all the kids, we put an air mattress down right here. Um, we can put a little table over there just to put our bags and stuff on. Um, 
We can put the Dometic toilet over in the corner if we need to. Uh, just a lot of, just a lot of space. Um, it does, it doesn't seal completely around the camper, um, but it does a pretty good job. So to secure the annex to the camper, I just got these tarp clips from I think Academy or Walmart or, or somewhere, then attach them to some shock cord. So I just attach one up here. The other one comes down from the bottom. I attach it here to this little loop and it keeps the, the annex wrapped around the camper pretty nicely. There are some gaps, but nothing too bad. And if you open it up here, let me go back. I mean, you can see, look at all that. We've got so much enclosed space here. Up into the tent. I mean, just so much. So we can come down here, sit here with the table out. When it's just the two of us or with the kids, bed in there, air mattress out here, us up top. Um, it's just fantastic. Right, let's go upstairs. So from inside the annex, just walk right up here and here we're in the tent. Got one window open. We've got these little string lights that we got from REI, I think, that we just zip tied up to all the poles. Runs off a little USB pack. Um, we are able to keep our bedding in here all the time, so it's just opened up and throw the pillows up and we're ready to go. But we absolutely love this tent. The Walkabout series is a fantastic tent. The mattress is very comfortable. They say one of the most comfortable mattresses on the market. We don't have a lot of experience except for this one, but we like it a lot. We like this. We like sleeping up here better than we do down in the camper. I thought I would show you real quickly what the light suppression technology looks like in these 230 tents. The black coating on the inside, when it's zipped up, I mean, it's daylight outside and it's super dark in here. So if you're a you know person that likes to sleep late but can't at camp because of the sunlight, 230 tents with the LST light suppression technology are amazing. As you can see, it's pitch black in here. You can sleep as late as you want. That's pretty much it. This is, this is our setup. We absolutely love it. From having the water tank, the articulating hitch, the fact that this is super light, pulls great behind the Jeep. We have options with it. If you've seen my Land Between the Lakes video, you know, I just slept downstairs because it was just me and it was great. Um, if you saw our Beaver's Bend State Park trip, um, we had, it was cold, it was windy that weekend, so we had the annex and it was just me and Kara. Um, we did the bottom down as a kind of a living room area and it was great. We put the buddy heater down at the bottom of the edX. It filled up the heat up here and was terrific. I love having all the options that's what makes uh you know doing this so much fun is that we can do it so many different ways and it's great but anyway thanks for watching thanks for uh checking out this video hope you enjoyed it if you have any other questions if there's something i didn't cover here let me know in the comments if you would like the video subscribe to the channel all that good youtube stuff and we'll see you next time bye